You know, I was working with the Heldon tenor recently, and uh, you realize how many hours he has to sing over 120, 130 piece orchestra, and the uh, declamation of the text required is very often very, very big and dramatic. That's why we don't sing those parts. Uh, the, the idea is that if I would intensify my, uh, my declamation enough, I could, I could sneak by and fool somebody and sound like a, that I could sing that music. But here's the problem. That means I'm going to be working steadily. I'm going to work my body, my muscles, my legs, everything, for literally for hours. And then I'm supposed to rehearse every day, maybe sing every night. I don't know. Anyway, I never attempted the big monster parts. I did uh, the ones uh, before that, the, what they call the Sard Sushenfach, the between category, or the youthful hero category, but never the big hero category. Never held them tenor. So, and now I'm 81. And it's a little bit like there's a joke, sort of a, a, a close to real life joke, where someone sees the famous old singer, and the old singer walks by, and he's walking like this, and someone says, oh, hello, sir, come in the toilet. How are you? Tell us how you've been doing. And, and he looks at him and he says, you, you know, this is the voice. The voice is still good, but the legs, the legs. So that's what happens while you're, while you're singing. You might still have your voice, your vocal cords, you might have your diaphragm, you can still breathe, but... All of those little muscles that coordinate to provide uh, youth, vigor, and color, and things like that tend to get a little <clears throat> less strong than they were when you were young. So what I'd like to do today is talk about the easier way to do something. Now, we've already got some things established. One is you breathe in your lower back. We're going to discuss breathing a little bit, too. The I can either breathe in my lower back and do a preset, and then sing. So let's try that. I'll do the miniature cough first, right? Breathe in. That's Manuel Garcia's miniature cough. Breathe. <coughs> Hear that? <coughs> Here's the trick. Set that up like you're going to do that, <coughs> and then relax and leave the program running, but don't Activate. Just, you're already there. You're already programmed. The idea is to program you through constant vocalises so that you end up this way, sing this way, without having to do audible coughs and things. So I'm going to go, <coughs> and then undo. Ah, how are you today? I'm feeling fine. I could have gone, how are you today? I'm feeling fine. But I can undo that and go, how are you today? I'm feeling fine. It's when you're talking about singing for four hours or longer and very dramatic music, uh, as a professional singer who's singing every night sometimes, very, very often, I want to sing Carmen nine nights in a row. In other words, there are, t there are times when you get very, very busy. Uh, funnily enough, I went on the stage one night to sing uh, Tamino, and I was standing by stage waiting. He, his entrance is right in the beginning, and I, I was standing by stage waiting for my entrance, and I heard the orchestra begin, and this wave of boredom just went over me. It was terrible. I said, what am I doing here? This is not artistic. And I went, and so I, I really had to sort of uh, fire myself up a little bit. And so I said, what in the world? How many times have I sung? I went home, I checked my logbook, and I'd already sung it 39 times that season. And that's the danger. Sometimes you get a little bored. Now, what do you do if you get bored? Stand around and be boring? Or do you try to agitate and do something to make things so more active? So. If we go down the list of our instigators, some of you know them, some of them do not. Some of them, there's some videotapes of marvelous tenor uh, Joshua Quesada demonstrated some of them for me on videotape. Uh, but let's say I do whatever. I do ba 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 That's the one designed to close the nose. ba 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 So you're never singing the false mask, but you're always singing the true mask. Now... What happens is the energy I need to do that, ba 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 you go from M to B, you go mm, you can feel it rise your soft palate rises up forward in the front and closes your nose. Now, what happens if I do that and then just let go and let the program run instead of me having to activate all the time, right? So I take a breath behind me. I go ba 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 ba. Undo. 
still not in my nose because the program is running. If I do these vocalises all the time, that is the program that I'm going to sing with. Whether I activate every note all night long or whether I just undo and let the program run. Ideally, when you're singing really big repertoire, and it's really, it's really, they asked Birgit Nielsen, what do you need to be a great Wagner singer? And she said, a good pair of shoes. Because you're out there for a long, long time with huge orchestra, huge orchestra. I sang a performance one time of uh, Flying Dutchman, and uh, the soprano's voice was so big, this was in Zurich, and her voice was so big, first of all, I was up there waving my arms going, and I don't think anybody heard a note I sang all night when, 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 this, when this lady was singing. As it turned out, the chorus went on strike for three days because they said their ears were ringing so badly that they could not rehearse. Now, that's a big voice, folks. That's happened to me twice. And uh, uh, I used to sing uh, a lot, uh, Tosca a lot when I was in Wiesbaden. I sang Tosca a lot with the gal who sang uh, Isolde and Brunhilde. She had a huge voice, but she never really covered me. But there were a couple of them. Uh, Dvorah Kovo was one of them, a Czech soprano. She covered me, and I went to the Met Metropolitan Opera to hear her, and sure enough, I couldn't hear the orchestra. The voice was just humongous. Uh, so you, you figure, you know what? You, you can't yell your way through those. I've heard Franco Corelli, who had a big voice, big, fantastic voice, in, in his prime, and he's young, or younger, uh, and he sang with Birgit Nielsen, Turandot. And when they got to the third act duet, you couldn't hear Corelli part of the time. Well, it's not exactly a crime to be covered by the biggest voice in the world, which is what she had at that time, you know? Uh, it was great, by the way. Fab, they were both, the minute she stopped, you could hear Corelli. He was fantastic. So you don't care if he got covered. You see, Berling used to get covered sometimes. My favorite male singer I ever heard. Uh, uh, some of the singers were more clever about repertoire they sang, and they sang in a way that their voices could be heard, but uh, you, you, sh you shouldn't worry about it too much, you know? You should just sing in a way where you undo effort and stay with the program. Now, let's talk about that. Okay, so let's find another vocalist. I got them sort of list written down here. Let's do Nyam Nyam. So I go, Nyam 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 Every one of these, as I've demonstrated before, kicks out right here. Nyam 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 Nyam. See that? The idea is once I get the kick out, once I get the attachment, what they used to call the attachimiento, uh, that you attach the breath to the diaphragm and you have these vocalises, these instigators I call them, and that gets you attached to your diaphragm. Now, am I attached if I don't actively attach all the time? What if I just let the program ride? So I go... Yum, 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 Undo. What program is left? Think about it. How are you today? I'm feeling fine. Let's go down time and get something to eat. You'll notice that I never have to modify a vowel or distort my throat or yawn or do anything to, to, to disturb text. Imagine you're doing a brand new opera and nobody knows the words, nobody's ever heard the words, and you're up there supposed to uh, project the text all night long through this brand new opera. People haven't heard the music and they're supposed to hear the words. So what do I do? If I start m manipulating my throat and changing my throat, all of a sudden I'm going to be pronouncing like that. Hi, how are you today? Right? What if it's ein, zwei, drei? And I go, ein, zwei, drei. Well, I can sing that way, but why should I have to? So I take a breath. I go, yum, 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 yum. Undo. Ein, zwei, drei. You can understand every word I am saying without doing anything at all. And you can do it in every language. So all of these little vocalises that we do, another one, a famous, uh, uh, I can put them in family. So another one is a diaphragmatic instigator like called Hla. Hla. You give a little at the beginning, the L, when you stop the L, it kicks out on your tummy right here. See? Hla. Now I'm going to undo that. Hla. How are you today? It's so nice to see you. Guess what? I can still talk. So why shouldn't I be able to sing? Hla. Undo. Sevaranwa karmendetemokidemwa. 
You want to tell me I need more than that? Hey, you know me, I have some. Don't need more than that. But you must not sing, as far as I'm concerned, any repertoire where you have to be busy all night long hanging on for dear life. And these singers that hold the soul pedal up all the time, nye, 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 nye. I have to do that all the time. If I don't do that, my voice just disappears. Where does it go? It falls out. So it's something. So I can sing that way, like that. Pal it up, focus. Somebody said, boy, I like that sound a lot better. You know what, my friend? You're not a professional singer if you say that. And you had no, you have to get on the stage and do that for hours? Are you kidding? Not to mention rehearsal all day and rehearsal tomorrow and perform tomorrow night. You get in the German system, you will rehearse and perform sometimes every day. So my idol at the moment when I was singing in Germany, it was Helge Roswang. And Roswang sang seven days a week. He, he, he sang three times a day. He sang, he did uh, rehearsals in the morning, made records in the afternoon, and sang a performance every night, seven days a week, for 55 years. And I said, how is this possible? Really, how is this possible? To what do you attribute, the, attribute this kind of, uh, I guess, longevity is word, because when I met him, he was 69, he was still singing like, you know, the world's greatest tenor. And... I said, how is it possible? He said, yoga. I said, yoga? He said, yes, yoga. I said, well, I don't understand. You sing every day, all day. I mean, you sing all night, every night. I said, what, what do you do if you, if you don't feel good that night? You feel tired? He said, I open my mouth and the yoga sings for me. And I sort of learned right there that it really is a matter of programming. If we program ourselves to do good things, healthy things all the time, then there's no reason why we can't sing anytime. You know? Think about it, unless you're really sick. And even then, the most, most professional singers sing when they're sick. The cancellations that I really uh, heard about were, were people that got sick, you know, like some kind of kidney illness, something like that, kidney stone. Because when you sing correctly, you breathe in your back. And when you start to sing, your back squeezes like that. That's in the Caruso by, book, by the way, where he described it works like a, a bellows. He said it opens up like a bellows when you breathe in the back and squeeze together when you sing. That process can hurt people if they're sick in their backs or if you have a terrible back problem uh, one way or another. It, it, it can interfere. But the idea is to breathe and let's, pre let's preset to program ourselves to sing well. So what's another one? How about lip clamp? I'm going to go, mmm, it's not an M, mmm, and it's not humming. Mmm, it's a lip clamp. You press the lips together like this, you go, mmm, ma, 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 ha. And you see this, when I do this, I go, mmm, they're jumped. I'm not doing that, by the way. It's, uh, these are all reactions. I'm not pushing my stomach out. At all. It does it by itself. The minute I make, try to make a sound with one of these uh, instigators, it becomes diaphragmatic. And by the way, I learned them all from great singers. I didn't invent any of these, right? That's why they work. So I breathe in, I go, I go, mm -ma. now let go. I'm not doing anything. The program is running, right? You know, it's funny, you drive your car down the highway, 70 miles an hour, and you're traveling. You don't sit there and do this all the time. Something relaxes, you sit back, and you just sort of respond as you need to respond. And uh, you, that, that's almost the ideal situation, which is to develop your programming to the point that it sings. You know, you don't always feel good. You've always got, you, somebody's got something on your mind, and it's, you wish you didn't, but it's possible. Uh, you think of children, little children, and start whining. It's not fair. You're going to make me go to bed, and I don't want to go to bed. And I want to watch TV with everybody else. Well, look where my voice is sitting right now. It's out of my nose. Where's my voice sitting right now? What is happening down here? It's not fair what you're making me do. It's not fair what you're making me do. I don't want to go to bed now. You realize you can use that as a vocal technique? If you could program that, you know, your voice would carry like a rocket, like children's voices do when they, when they whine. I've had four, I know. <laughs> so... I'm going to breathe in, behind me. I'm going to say, it's not fair what you're making me do. I'm going to then I'll leave my voice there and go, ah. If I undo, I go, ah. It's hard to keep whining. It makes me want to laugh when I do that. See? But laughing is a great technique, too. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> if I take a breath behind me, 
And I laugh. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be happy. I'm going to laugh. But I'm not going to worry about I'm just going to let the program go. Where does it go if I do that? See? What am I doing? What do I do when I do nothing? Or am I really doing nothing? No, when I'm doing nothing, the little department up here that gives these constant commands is maybe, I don't know, not doing, it's, it's running a little bit, I'm not doing very much. So I don't, it's supposed to be so programmed. And in my age, you know, sometimes you have no other choice. I hear a tape myself, I say, where'd that wobble come from? Holy cow, what is it? Well, guess what? I got thinking about something else and got out of the program, and, you know, it's not as automatic as it used to be. Let's face it. It used to be a lot more automatic when you were a young whippersnapper, right? Uh, bad stuff can become also very, very habitual, and it's very hard. Somebody stands up saying, they go, put their head down like this. Guess what? How do you break that? How do you break a bad habit? So we don't want any bad habits. We want to constantly do the good instigators that are passed on to us by the great singers, and we know that they worked for them, right? So what do you do? So we have, uh, let's say we have uh, cough, uh, uh, laugh. <laughs> then we have wheezing. <laughs> that is used in spinto voices to develop the intensification of the uh, lean of the breath or the compression of the breath. So if I wheeze, I go, <laughs> now what is that? <laughs> See, I, I want to do something uh, more dramatic and I don't want to yell, so what do I do? I simply, add in, uh, I simply intensify the compression of my breath and my diaphragm. And I hope I practice it enough that it's automatic. <laughs> Some singers wheeze all the time by giving a constant command, and they tend to get tired. But if you let it do it by itself, <sighs> see? <sighs> Do I really need to be given a command all the time that my voice do something? Therefore, if you take voice lessons, you really should only study with someone who's been a professional singer. The people that haven't sung professionally don't know all this stuff. They just simply don't know. There's no way they can know, you know? You wouldn't study uh, to be a doctor with someone who'd never, who, I mean, with a, to learn surgery with someone who'd never cut before, you know? Maybe never held a scalpel before. In other words, the whole idea is to learn what you need to learn to, to be able to execute all the requirements of the music. And some of this music is pretty darn difficult, right? Breathe. You've got uh, something like, uh, what's a good example? Uh, something like, you know, wretched a teeth that is sort of bangy. Now I can do all of that stuff and make those little effects and back off here and get louder there, all of it, because I'm programmed to sing in my diaphragm. If you do ba 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 ba, now my nose is closed. I'm not in the false mask. I'm up here, so I know I got the resonance taken care of. And by the way, if you do that in the theater. If you sing ma, 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 they don't hear you well. Your friends will come back and say, you're a little tired. Are you tired? What's the matter? You go ba, 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 ba. Everybody comes back and says, oh, my gosh, your voice is so big in the theater. Well, you're not doing anything except taking advantage of the acoustical phenomenon of the human voice. Look at little babies this long. Man, you get them in a big church, a big uh, uh, department store, so, and they can fill that space by going, ah, 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 ah. Guess what they do? <laughs> what is that? So that's where Manuel Garcia got his concept of the miniature cough. And uh, Giovanni Lamperti used the phonation process, the shape of it. And that's what he based his style. His greatest uh, student was uh, Marcella Zembrich. And when she taught later at Juilliard she, in New York, she taught the oval lying on its side. Something like this. Now, if that's the shape of my mouth, I'm limited. What can I sing that way? See? Ah, 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 ah,
to modify the oval, the oval lying on the side to go to a high note? What do you think? La, I don't have to do anything. Not if I'm programmed to sing on my diaphragm and to have the invisible throat, the invisible jaw, and the invisible tongue. By the way, that came from Ava Turner, who was a, a super superstar in England, did the first turn on in 19, whatever, 23 or 21, something like that, 23. And uh, she was a superstar a student of the Garcia School because she studied with Dan Rotham, who also taught Clara Butt, if you knew Clara Butt was the greatest contralto in history. And, uh, but Dan Rotham taught both of them this Garcia method of the miniature cough and the invisible throat, invisible jaw, and invisible tongue. And it works like a charm. You don't have to do anything, right? And people say, oh, you have to open your mouth. You have to pull your mouth down to sing. You don't really have to. It all depends how you've been programmed. If you don't like this, why would I have to do that? Why don't I go, can I sing with you? What if somebody say, oh, you got to sing with your teeth together all the time? Oh, really? What do I do then? What kind of programming would I get? So some people actually talk this way, you know? It's interesting to listen to them talk that way. I was an accent coach for a while in New York, and it's very interesting how you teach people to make accents with the nose half open and half closed. Anyway, man, now shall we go and have a, uh, have a drink down at the pub? The idea is, but if you sing that way, what do you do? Can you sing that way? Well, of course you can sing that way. Why not? See? Hello, how are you? Adio, miorito, asil. Why can't I sing that way if I want to? So the idea is to go through all of these vocalises that we know are the good ones, right? We go, now my throat's completely relaxed. I'm going to attach that falsetto by direct, making it directional. And then I'm going to go, and now I'm going to do nothing. Ah, if I program that properly, or I should say enough, maybe enough's the word, if I program these good vocalises enough, I will get so that's the only way I know how to sing. It's the only way it knows how to sing, and I can just not worry about it and stay out of it and get up and, you know, every time you learn some kind of new music, that's how you sing it. How are you today? It's so nice to see you, right? What do you do? Santa vis me ferderben. Do I have to do anything? What about, oh, it's another one, the one on the vocalist, and it, you'll notice that it responds. The whole point of that one is it relaxes your tongue, your jaw, and your throat, and you're like this. See how it sings right there? Then I go, And guess what? It feels like I'm doing nothing. But I did a heck of a lot of programming vocalises before I ever got to the point where I stand there and feel like I'm doing nothing. You understand? So the whole idea is to get these vocalises straight. Uh, if you do another, another one is the famous lip pull. Now, Franco Corelli used this. Elizabeth Schwarzkopf used it. Uh, Tibaldi used it. Which is you grab the upper lip like this. Right down here, it's the buttons right there by your nose. Grab your upper lip, pinch it together like this. Pull it down and go... See, where does my voice go and what happens down here? If I let go, I go. It's in the Caruso book where he said, never show your teeth. He said, some people have beautiful teeth and want to show them off. But you should not show your teeth when you sing. What happens to the sound? <laughs> now I'm going to have to do something in my throat to get some color back because I just my color went to heck. See? <laughs> all of a sudden I'm doing all kinds of things to look for color. When all I had to do was not raise my upper lip. Leave my upper lip like, like this. See that? Uh, uh, Elizabeth Schwarzkopf called that the elephant's trunk. She used to walk around the master class like this. Oh, so you swing your trunk. Your trunk hangs down. I said, well, did you ever learn any? What, what else do you learn about singing? She said, that's all I ever learned. She studied with Evo Goon. It was a very famous soprano in the German system. And uh, as we know, Schwarzkopf sang. I used to sing with Schwarzkopf. And you'd watch her singing, and she'd be going. Incoming call 
while she was singing. Alexa, stop. So we would be going like this. She would go, she go, oh, something's a little bit exaggerated. She wasn't feeling good or something. She'd be, she'd pull this down like crazy, see? But the idea is it was down, and it kicked the voice, one way to kick the voice, the mask, and what happens to the phonation? I'm going, ah, 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 all of these possibilities of phonation. Ah, how are you today? So nice to see you. Hello, how are you today? So nice to see you. After a while, you get so used to it, and it stays down without any problem, see? And you can say, vogliamo andare nella città per comprare qualche cosa per mangiare stasera. And everything stays down. And it is just like everything else, it's programming. If I do this enough times, and now it stays there. I don't have to worry about it. So we are trying to program the singer so that they know what it is to do. Tabaldi had one exercise. Tabaldi did that one, and then she did the happy gasp. <gasps> what are you doing here? What a surprise. They call it the happy surprise, too. <gasps> ah, 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 ah. Now, what is the shape of the back of my throat? What is the shape of the back of my neck? <gasps> what am I programming if I repeat that all the time? Now, am I going to sing <gasps> like that? Delle mie valle in corpo che si regala fin da non voglio da tre mesi ogni festa in un rivolto colle misterioso un uomo entra ogni notte Am I gonna have to do that every time between every phrase before every phrase? Or can I just walk around going Are you doing nobody's watching? <laughs> it's not one that I uh, necessarily include in the way I teach or the way I sing, but I know about it, and it does occasionally help some singer to get the concept, right? Of saying, in other words, how do you smile without showing your teeth? That's one way to teach them to do it. You don't go, ha ha ha, you go, ha ha ha, right? So, uh, all of these, all of these little instigators that, that, that I have learned, right? We, we use them, I got them from somewhere, uh, another one is the uh, the breath stop, right? You go, huh. that's just an exhalation with a stop on it. Huh. 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 Breath stop, by the way, is uh, Lily Lehmann's trans translation of Atemstau, or Staupunkt. Uh, Stauen means to jam something, to stop something completely. A dam in a river in German is a Staudamm. Uh, traffic uh, traffic uh, jam is an Verkehrsverstauung. So this word Stauen means to stop something, to jam something. And she called what she did here on her chest. And by the way, it's a very interesting career. She could sing anything from the heavy strings. She was the Isolde of all time from Tristan Isolde. But she also sang Constanze in, uh, in Abduction Seraglio and sang uh, color, all kinds of coloratura and all kinds of... She could sing anything. Her technique was to take a deep breath behind her and jerk the abdomen in, she said, jerk the abdomen in an instant before you breathe. Then, jam the breath against the chest, right? And then sing. In other words, you are given certain things to program. When you stand up, you, get a, you sing with the program. You don't constantly have to do this. Unfortunately, a lot of the singers are being taught to program things that are, first of all, unnecessary, second of all, really bad in some cases. Uh, in the old uh, Belcanto school, the rules are very simple. No action in the throat. So if I have an action in the throat, well, what do I do? No action in the tongue, no action in the jaw. Now what? So if I go... Uh, Let's say I go to a high note and go, no, that's an action of the throat. It's against the rules, the old rule. So I had to go, ah, now, what is the programming that will let me sing that way? See? One of them is, ma, ma. Another one is, ba, 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 ba. Yum, 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 yum. Ra, ra. Now leave it alone. Go, ah, and the program will run by itself. This is so crucial if you're going to be a professional singer and you're going to be singing a lot. If you get into the German system, 
uh, is you, you, you abs don't forget they travel. They travel. They used to travel from Hamburg down to, to Munich where the, where the train stopped at, uh, at Essen in the middle of the night. And we were there for, we were there for, for rehearsal the next morning. And you figure you've got to stand and deliver all the time. And it's, some of this music is dramatic. And what do you do? Well, you program it. You program, hopefully you get a chance to, to uh, study the music, that, study the role, of the, 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 when you don't know the role, you start off doing the role, and you start singing it uh, on these programmings. But another one is hung on, now that's in the nose, that's in the lower mass, but what if I sing over the hung line? Hung on, what if I program it to be up here and not down here? So I go, hung on, if I go, hung on, it's in my nose. But if I know where that hung line is, and I know where the wrong resonance is, I can sing over it and sing up here. So it's a, it's a, it's a good way to sing. Hung on, hung on, hung on, that's the way Max Lorenz sang, and James King sang that way, no need sing, a number of singers are sang that way. And what kind of programming is it? Think about it. Hung on, hung on, hung on, how do I do that? Ah, 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 and I'm not opening my throat either. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing anything. By the way, having a loose jaw, a loose tongue, loose throat is also programmable. I can do this. Until I don't need my tongue anymore. You ever wonder how ventriloquists pronounce when they're doing this? You know? They're talking about that. You're doing the puppet voice and all like that. And all of a sudden, oh my gosh, he's doing this and he'll start talking like that. Hello. Hi, nice to see you. Let's get on down and get something to eat. Some people talk that way and it depends what part of the country they're from. I mean, our country. We have dialects and accents everywhere. And people talk, well, oh, how are you doing? You go to Atlanta, Georgia, say, well, how are you doing? Sure did not see you. I'm going to go down there and get something to eat. I remember going to, where was I, in Tupelo, Mississippi? Yeah, and then met this girl. She said, I'm going to write a letter to my mother and my father. And I thought, nothing is moving. How do you do that? Where do we put the vowels when we're doing this programming? Do I program my vowels here? What language do you know that's spoken like that in the world? Hi, how are you today? So nice to see you. I don't know of any. I've never heard of a language being spoken that way. You know? Then you get a few singers who distort the heck out of the language, and then they think it's supposed to get up, and, and, and that, they're, they're going to sing. They don't have long careers. They only have short careers. Think about it. Look around you today. They're fantastic young talent. It's all dropping like flies. Meanwhile, when I was a student coming up in New York, you had people that were singing and, until they were 80. I met uh, Giovanni Martinelli when he was 77, singing at the Met. Right? How did they sing? Think about it. So I go, How are you today? How are you today? Blah, 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 blah. Sing something really busy, right? I'm spirit, fetish me a the father. It's fendus and hicks are not. Do I really want to do that for hours and hours and add this to it? You want to tell me that's not enough work in my diaphragm? I got to add all this business? No. So, I want you to think in terms of doing breathing exercises until they're programmed. That means we breathe way down the lower back. And then we go. You do all these little vocalises until you don't know any way to sing except to attach your breath to your diaphragm. And the breath must come from somewhere. To be attached. Tetrasini said the first drop of air goes down the lower rear quadrant of the lungs. Then you fill the lungs from the bottom to the top. And then you lean the breath over against the sternum, like you lean a ladder against the wall. So if I do all that and go, and there it is. See? What am I doing? I'm singing on the program that that way of breathing
gave me. Caruso, in his book, talks about breathing in the lower back and letting the lower back open up like a bellows. And we start to sing the lower back squeezes together, and he calls it contrary motion. So I'm going to breathe way down on my lower back and pull my abdomen. He said, pull your stomach in. So I'm going to pull my stomach in, breathe in my lower back, then do a contrary motion. Ah, what kind of programming is that? See, I'm going to breathe. It's all in the breathing, the breathing, the breathing, and the more you breathe way down your lower back, and the more your throat relaxes with every breath, and the less you do up here, the, the, the more secure you come. Finally, you end up with no choice. You have to sing on your diaphragm. The breath's got to go somewhere. Well, I can either let the breath run up here, or I can direct my breath. Breath is directional, and people have to remember that. I'm going to breathe in. I'm going to direct my breath here. Ah, or here. Ah, or here. Ah. Anyway, we'll talk about that today. I really want to talk about this programming thing where you repeat over and over and over and over until you don't know any other way to sing, but fabulously. Okay? Okay, bye.